So today I'm with Kitty. Kitty, uh, today you're going to a clinic, right? So like a mm -hmm. treatment center to get methadone. Yeah. What What is the purpose of you getting methadone? What What is methadone? Well, basically methadone, it helps you get off of like um, fentanyl or, or heroin or whatever. It, it, it's the same effect, but... Um, it's, it's a prescription. It's, it's a medication. Instead of um, getting in trouble for doing all the, the drugs and everything, going to jail for it, get on methadone and it's legal. <laughs> you know, and it keeps you out of jail. And, and you can make long-term plans and stuff, you know. They help you out with a lot of that stuff. I heard that methadone kind of weans you off of the drugs that you've been addicted to, right? Yes, yes, it does. And it does. have you been doing blues? Yeah. I had to because I had to start the program all over again because I didn't have anything in my system. You can't go in there if you don't have anything in your system. I went to jail, so I didn't have any methadone in my system when I got out. And I didn't have anything else in my system. So they can't just put you on methadone if you don't have anything in your system. <laughs> okay. So, How long is this treatment of methadone going to go on for you? How long is it? Well, everybody's different. Everybody's different. Um, if you do it like you're supposed to, then you won't be on it for the rest of your life. But there are some people that, that have to be on it for the rest of their lives because they, they do, they still do the drugs and they do the methadone both. Okay. And this okay. is like kind of forced treatment from the courts you said? Yeah. yeah. Well, I started it before I went to jail because I just kind of want to get my, I don't want to be 80 some years old and, and, you know, hit a tray or something, you know, <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't wanna, I don't want to be that. So, you know, but, um, yeah, and it is also that, too. I have to do a diversion program, you know, because I just got out of jail. So, and I don't want to go back, so. <laughs> you got out two days ago? Yeah, I got out a couple of days ago. I was in there for, like, a week. You were in there for a week? Yeah, it met the, um, fentanyl is really easy to get in there, though. It's terrible. It's terrible. Really? So many girls are ODing in there, yeah. People are ODing inside of jail yes, because uh, fentanyl, these pills, are readily accessible in jail? Yes, they are. How do they get it into jail? Um, they, they keister it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's I, dangerous. I, yeah, I had to save a girl's life in there. When I, I was in there, like, two days before I got out, she was overdosing. She turned purple, and I had to give her CPR and compressions. And they, the DOs yanked me off the bed, and I got written up and sent to the hole for saving her life. Because <laughs> I wasn't certified. So they punished you for saving somebody's life, the yeah. corrections officers? Mm-hmm. Wow. They did. Well, thank you for saving uh, somebody's life. You know, it's really commendable. And uh, thank you, you know, that you did the right thing, right? Even though you got punished for it. I yeah. think uh, you would appreciate if somebody saved your life, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. She said thank you on her way out, so. Okay. Felt pretty good. What? And so now coming out here, you're trying to uh, gain control of your life. Mm -hmm. How many years have you been battling with addiction to either counterfeit fentanyl or opioids or just anything in general? Well, my stepmom made me do my first line of meth in the sixth grade to, so I would clean the house. So it started from there. In the sixth grade, mm -hmm. your stepmom mm -hmm. made you do a line of meth. Yes, yeah, so I would clean the house. So you would clean the house. Yeah, that's where it started. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's not right. That, no. that shouldn't happen. A parent's not supposed to do that. And then in uh, junior high, she sold me for an, uh, an eight ball of meth to somebody. So A couple years later, she sold you for... Mm -hmm. For drugs, yeah. So drugs have been in my life all my life. That's basically all I knew. I didn't know anything else. <laughs> do you have children? I've had six kids. Only two of them are living. Because I'm a really, I'm a high risk pregnancy and I have a four year old son that drowned quite a few years ago. But I am a grandma for the first time though. Okay. So, but I took care of my kids. I took care of my kids and everything. They're all grown. They're okay, all grown. you want a better future for your grandchildren, right? I do, absolutely. That's, that's why I'm doing all this. <laughs> for them? Yep. Well, for me and for them. Absolutely. Yeah. The youngest person I've seen out here is 13 doing these counterfeit pills. What's the youngest you've seen out here in the streets? The youngest I've seen, about 13, 12, 13 years old. Why do you think they're getting younger and younger? 
I think it's just, it's, it's a bad, it's like every, there's like cycles, you know, like when crack was a bad epidemic, you know, they had to, it took a long time for them to get that cleaned up and then came meth to get that cleaned up and then heroin and now the pills, but the pills are just, there's such a huge, huge epidemic and everybody's, uh, everybody's doing them, it's, you know, it's, you can get them anywhere, <laughs> they're everywhere, they're everywhere. Doesn't matter how much they take off the streets, there's always more available. It just never stops. <laughs> it's like a bubblegum machine, you know? <laughs> you turn the thing and it keeps coming out. <laughs> it's crazy. Are you going to, do you think you're going to be, uh, remain successful with this methadone program? Stay away from triggers to not go back to that, that pill? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I do. I do. And it's this, this whole diversion program thing I have to do is pro is pretty much the thing that's pushing me towards that because I, I don't want to go back to jail. Jail is horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. I, I, when I got arrested, I, I blacked out and broke my nose and they denied me medical. So my, my attorney's going to be taking care of that too. So yeah, they, just, they don't care about us out here. They don't. I had a broken nose and they gave me tissue and said, clean it up. And the other one said, are you HIV positive? And they denied me medical. I said, Can you call an ambulance? And they don't know. So yeah, they don't, they don't care. I don't care. They just want to get out there and get their brownie points, as far as I'm concerned. Because I wasn't even, I wasn't doing anything when they stopped me. So I was on my way here when they stopped me. It was a 10 year old warrant, <laughs> you know? So you did a week in jail because you had mm -hmm. a 10 year old warrant? Yeah, I did. Yep. So you going to jail for a week, that was your rock bottom, and that's why you decided to join the diversion program and just avoid jail going forward and just do this, get a handle of your life, and met go through methadone? Yeah. Yep. So why do you think other other folks that are addicted to blues, they don't go through with the methadone program? Well, I'm sure eventually if they get, they get jammed up or something, they're probably going to think about it. There's a lot of people that are doing methadone that go to jail. They do the pills and the methadone both. That's that's a big big thing with a lot of people. They're doing both. So, so the methadone gets you high but not as high as the pills? The blues? Or? Right. Or sometimes the, the dose isn't high enough so they have to still smoke blues so they don't get sick because the, the withdrawals, you can die from the withdrawals. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. There's a lot of girls in jail that that are the withdrawal pretty bad and you you're pretty lucky if you get methadone out here then they'll give you methadone in there but if you don't then then you're you're withdrawing cold turkey so how many uh blues were you doing per day and how many methadone pills are you doing per day now i was doing like from 50 to 100 pills a day smoking um methadone i was on my on 30 dose but i think that they're gonna up it they up it to where they up it until you're comfortable and you're not having withdrawals at all for, for, for a full 24 hours until you go get your methadone again. They try to find the com where you're comfortable at and you're not going to have withdrawals until you go in and get the next dose. So okay. they like do it every every 10, you know, every 10 until you're comfortable. Got it. So, so uh, Kitty, I'm going to say thank you very much for talking to me. Uh, before I leave, I'm going to hand you some Narcan. You're, you're familiar with Narcan, right? Yes. Yes, I am. Um, and I'm gonna hand you a couple uh, boxes of mm -hmm. Narcan okay. so you can use it if yeah. uh, one of your friends out here in the mm -hmm. streets uh, need it, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you've been around people that have OD'd before, yes, right? Yes, I have, yes. And you know how important mm -hmm. it is to have that yeah, uh, Narcan yeah. nasal and just to mm -hmm. revive people, right? Yes. So, uh, so here's uh, two boxes. Those are uh, given to me by uh, Southwest Behavioral Health uh, so I can pass them out to you folks. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I want to say thank you very much for talking to me, sharing your story. I want to wish you nothing but success with your uh, methadone journey. Uh, get away from blues, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah. Get weaned off of, uh, uh, of your addiction completely. Mm -hmm. Uh, no more yeah. methadone at all. Yeah. No anything. Yeah. Just no go out anything, there and live yeah. life and go be a, a grandma, right? Yep. Enjoy enjoy yep. your grandchildren and enjoy the rest of your life, right? Because yes, you've been... Uh, 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 a slave long enough a slave to addiction long enough yeah, right all my life pretty much yeah. yeah since the sixth grade i can't even imagine that are you sick of it that's where that emotion's coming from right yeah you're crying you're you're sad right because all your life that's all you've known 
and I'm sorry you've gone through that. I'm sorry that you're, you're, you know, somebody that should have been protecting you put you through that, and you're still living this nightmare years, decades later. It's yeah, and they're still with, they're living the dream while I'm still out here. <laughs> it's okay, but hey, you're you're doing the right thing by uh, trying to get control of your life, Kitty. I admire you for that. You're my hero today. Okay, uh, lots of people are gonna watch this, and you're gonna save somebody's life. They're gonna they're gonna uh, go feed off of your strength and uh, get gain control of their lives okay, okay. so uh, you should be proud of yourself your family should be proud of your grandchildren should be proud of you okay so going through this journey okay so you're not alone people love you stay uh, on the right path and uh in the future i'll be looking for you for uh, another update okay okay thank, thank you. you kitty all right